All right, sorry about that. My phone actually ran out of storage. Um, so I'm gonna have to split this video into two separate videos. The second video is going to be a lot shorter. I'm probably only gonna try to go for about 10 to 15 more minutes. So I apologize about that. So this will be Scottish Rite Freemasonry part two. So I had to delete a couple, a couple older videos that I've already posted on YouTube um, to make room. So I'm just gonna have to keep deleting videos as I go, as I once I post them to YouTube off of my phone. It seems like my phone really can't hold that much um, space, you know, or data as far as that goes. And they want me to, like, of course, pay for more storage, which I'm not gonna do that. So really just need to get them onto a, to a hard drive or something like that. All of my pictures I really cherish and value especially of my family and my son. Those are my favorite pictures. So. Um, we left it off, we were talking about key, some key symbolism. We don't really need to get into the aspects of that. We know the symbolism of the key, what it does. Um, so we were talking about Moses, Aaron, and Solomon, um, names of God revealed in these degrees. There's always emphasis put on not pronouncing them actually especially in ancient times. And you see this in the school of like Pythagoras who made his initiates have a, I think they took a vow of silence for like a year or maybe even multiple years before they were even allowed to um, begin being taught um, by Pythagoras. So that was interesting. As we know in ceremonial magic, we utilize these, these sacred God names. But back in the day, you know, if you were in a certain, you know, secret group or organization, you were never allowed to pronounce these names, even upon, you know, death. So that's, you know, that's definitely not the case today. Um, because all these names, all these sacred names of God, they're very well known. They're all online. Um, you know, we have the grand old internet nowadays. And a lot of that's, you know, to me is just kind of superstitious. But in it, there is power and also um, silence. You know, if you, when you hold in the power of speech more often, when you speak less, when you do speak, it has power. So there is definitely power in not maybe pronouncing these sacred names all the time. You only use them when you're in a place that you are ritualistically set up. You are in a space that is sacred and you are performing a sacred ceremony for a sacred function. And then that's when you would use these names of God. And, you know, the, in the early Freemason degrees, they do emphasize a lot of the time, you know, not pronouncing those names. Um, the term Kabbalah is even mentioned in rituals occasionally. Um, the reason why the art, why did I, what did I write here? Reason why artwork has more rounded squares. Okay. Because you're moving from the compasses to the higher dimensions. What you'll see in a lot of, um, some of the art for Scottish Rite degrees, I don't have any pictures around me right now, but you know, the normal compass and square um, symbol of Freemasonry. The square is usually just real square at the bottom, you know, it's real rigid, but in, in the Scottish Rite degrees, the square starts to become more rounded and there's a there's a symbolical reason for this. There's a, you know, there's a key there. And what it is is the square is becoming less rigid. It's becoming more like the compass. Um, the compasses can go around in a total circle. You know, they can circumscribe things. You can draw different angles where the square is very rigid. It's just complete straight lines and it doesn't have a lot of flexibility to it. As you raise in higher degrees of vibration and awareness, the same happens with your own, you know, with your own physical and spiritual temple within. Um, reality starts manifesting for you in a more magical way um, because you're coming into higher levels of understanding. You're not stuck in just the square. You're not stuck in just material reality and seeing things just as black and white. That's why the um, floor of in a Freemasonic lodge of black and white too, you are standing above the black and white squares. You are transcending um, duality in at least some degree or some sense. It's hard to escape. You can't really escape polarity or duality because we're here having physical experiences. So we are meant to embrace that to a certain degree and learn, you know, catalytic um, evolutionary lessons from that. But it's important to keep that in mind as well. Um, the 72, there are 72 names of God um, and this has correlations. They talk about this in one of the degrees. I think it was even the fourth degree in the, the Franken manuscript. And these correspond to the 72 angels and demons um, 
it even refers to it as the alphabet of the angels and the Kabbalistic tree in that degree. Um, as we know, um, what is it? The the celestial lotus and rituals like that, the Damien Eccles does, where he utilizes the 72 angels of God and you see them as being in a circle around you. And then there are also the 72 um, demons that correspond with those angels. I've talked about that in a prior video as well. Um, you should go and check that out if that's something that interests you. Um, one of the other um, furniture pieces of the um, Sanctum Sanctorum is a seven branch candlestick. And the seven, you see this in a lot of like Jewish um, depictions, I believe. Um, this shows my ignorance because I don't know the, is it, is it Hanukkah where they actually utilize the candle, the seven branch candle? I'm not sure. I'm pretty ignorant of that, of the Jewish religion in general. Like I, I know, you know, obviously Kabbalah and things like that, but I don't know um, like modern day, you know, Jewish or what it means to be a like devout Jew, what is what is the term? There's a different term. I can't think of it offhand. But anyway, what it represents is the seven branch candlestick. Is the seven planets or the seven spheres that you um, traverse through on the tree of life? got earth moon mercury venus sun mars jupiter and then saturn and then the constellation starts here so really i think it's one two three four five six seven not counting earth so you got the seven chakra system um you know it all has correspondences to that um, incense is used in some of these degrees, and of course they, they obviously used incense in the, you know, in the biblical times, you know, offering up, up whatever sacrifices they might have had back then, too. Um, it seems that Yahweh always wanted them to kill animals. It's kind of, kind of crazy um, when you actually start reading the Old Testament and, like, seeing it for what it is. Um, the all-seeing eye is a symbol that's often portrayed in lodges, and in this degree it symbolizes dispelling darkness. There's symbolism in regards to the 12 zodiac. They talk about the zodiac and a lot of these earlier Masonic degrees. See, in the modern versions of them, you're not going to get as much of, to me, it's just not as much esoteric um, stuff going on. Uh, the four elements are symbolized as well. About the time the temple was completed or shortly after is when this degree takes place. So the only thing I have left to do, to do now is I'm going to read a couple of quotes from the fourth degree that I, I have here in the Franken manuscript sorry the Franken manuscript this was talking about this quote was talking about the names of God divinity composed of 888 letters forming 72 names which are accepted as this as the name of divinity according to the alphabet of the angels and the Kabbalistic tree so that was a little section in that degree which was really cool uh, mentioning that really briefly, and I'm sure that has ties to Enochian, you know, Enochian magic and the Enochian angelic alphabet as well. Um, that's actually a subject I'm not very um, well versed in or studied in, but I have read a little bit about it. I know that's in later versions of the Golden Dawn material. Um, they do, they do, um, that's part of the work that you do. And then I thought this quote was really, really interesting because we've been talking about Lucifer so much on this channel. The morning star has dispelled the shades of night and the great light begins to gladden our lodge. Then Solomon says, as the morning is the forerunner of this great light, which begins to shine. And as we all, all are secret masters, and then it continues on there dot 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 that's the end of the quote um that i wrote but i thought that was interesting just that really just that couple different little references to the morning star that they just threw in there and there's even a lodge in our district um where i'm at called morning star lodge so as you can see there's much symbolism attributed to venus and the morning star and a lot of people are scared of the name lucifer but that's because they don't understand what he represents 
very, very important key if you want to understand esoteric and occult information. So everyone, we're going to go ahead and wrap the video up there. Um, this completes, you know, this is part two of the last video. Um, so I didn't get to say thank you in the last video, any shout outs, anything like that. So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something from these videos. Um, if you are not subscribed to my channel already and you appreciate this material, please subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified of when I have new content coming out, um, hit the notification bell, you know, so that you are, you are notified of those videos. And I appreciate every one of you um, that is subscribed to this channel who, you know, who, who gives, who puts energy into it, especially those of you who comment and get engaged um, and, you know, learning and asking questions and showing me different perspectives as well, because this is all just a learning experience and I'm just trying to educate people on some of this stuff. Because there's a whole new world that becomes open to you when you start to learn about the esoteric and how you can apply it into your understanding of everyday reality. You know, all of this stuff has connections um, with, you know, reality, the synchronicities. Everything happens for a reason. Um, and I don't know if you can see that. I've got, even have Isis and her wings on my tie. I've had, had that on this tie for, for a long time. So, alrighty, everyone. Thank you very much, and hopefully I will have another video uh, posted again soon. But until next time, peace and love.